recording. There we go. So anybody who does not want to have their video recorded today, please just turn your video off. Otherwise, we can begin. So I'm going to turn it over to Kat, who will do our land acknowledgement. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. It's so nice to see you all. Um, I'm going to lead us through a land acknowledgement. Um, oh, I'm the ED of the Flux Media Gallery in Medianet, which is actually where I'm sitting right now. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge that the Flux Media Gallery, um, Victoria Arts Council Exchanges Gallery, and many of you all um, are currently on the ancestral and unceded territories of the Ligwangan peoples of the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations, and also the Wasanic peoples of the Pauquachin, Sartlip, Sacum, and Sawout First Nations. Um, I always like to ask everybody to take a few minutes to think about the land that you're on right now, uh, whose traditional territory it is, and um, get to know a bit about uh, the people who uh, originally lived there and continue to live there to this day, and to thank them for their ongoing stewardship of, of the lands um, in which we all occupy. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kat. <clears throat> And at this time, I'm just going to ask our curators, uh, Kimmy Craig and Teresa Vandermeer Schaas, to please identify yourselves so people know where you are. And say hello. Hello. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. I'm Teresa. <laughs> where, where are you calling in from today, Teresa? Um, I'm currently in Kwanlandan and Ta'an Kwachan territory, which is in Whitehorse, Yukon. So I'm in the Yukon right now. <laughs> nice. And Kemi? Hi. Uh, my name is Kemi, as Heidi said, and I am currently uh, visiting the Cherokee territories bordering on the Catawba territories, um, which you'd know as the foothills of South Carolina. Great. Well, I'm going to get going. So uh, first of all, I'll introduce myself. I'm Heidi Bergstrom. I am the president of Exchanges Gallery and Studios located in, as, as Kat has already identified, Lefunga Territories, otherwise known as Victoria. And uh, we're really thrilled to have you all joining us today for the first information session about this project. Um, we're really excited about being able to offer this opportunity in the first place. Um, I know that you've probably all researched the organizations now. Hopefully you've had a chance to check them all out. So you're getting familiar with this project and the purpose, but I am gonna review all of that with you today. And um, so I'm gonna start by sharing my screen. Is everybody able to see it? Yes. Yes, I see nodding heads, yay. And I'm going to move the video screen out of the way. So let's just get going. So project overview. So what are we gonna talk about today? So I'm gonna give you the background, the vision and the purpose. When, and what are those desired outcomes and benefits that we're looking for out of this project? I'm gonna talk a bit about the teams and the participants and especially introduction to the curatorial team who are gonna be supporting this project. And then a little bit about the project plan itself and the timing, which I'm sure you're all eager to find out about and about making your submission. And then we'll have time for questions and answers at, after that. I should just tell you as well, a little bit of background about this project. We actually applied for this well over a year ago. And um, the three collaboration groups got together. We brainstormed a whole bunch of activities and ideas and we didn't get the grant. Anyway, we were disappointed of course, and we're kind of crying into our cups, but about a year later, we got an, another email from the Canada Council saying, actually, you're now successful. You're at the top of our, our next list. So we were so thrilled about that. But then we had to quickly get organized and find out, you know, how are we going to go forward with this project now? Because we were all so busy with other things. Um, and I just wanted to point out too, this, this slide here is of a dancer named Kayla Henry. Some of you may know her from uh, local performances here. Uh, we worked with Kayla last year for Dance Days in 2021. Um, Constance Cook and Pamela Miller proposed that exchanges uh, be part of Dance Days for the very first time. So we went online with Kayla as our dancer and we had over 50 people um, join us for a Zoom drawing session online. And it was really, really interesting and really successful. 
And in fact, we've just recently done another experimental drawing session in Exchanges Gallery a couple of weeks ago. And it was, again, was really exciting and, and very interesting for the artists participating in that, um, that event. So this is something that's been inspiring us uh, for a while. But when we first got going on this project, it was really about looking at COVID-19 and the digital technologies that were pushing artists to rethink their processes and engagement with each other and the audiences. And I'll give you an idea. When COVID hit and exchanges had to close, we were terrified that this was actually gonna shut the whole organization down. But, and part of the reason for that was because uh, all of our drop-in sessions for life drawing were in person. And so people could no longer come. All of our exhibitions were in person, no one could come. And we didn't really know at that time how to pivot, but we learned very quickly how to pivot and go online. And in a, in a short time, we had over 400 artists participating in online life drawing, which was far and away in excess of what we'd ever had in person. So we were really learning that COVID was pushing a lot of um, levers for us. We also learned that you know, the traditional physical gallery space has to be re-envisioned um, to dynamically share that work and engage audiences differently, both online and physically. So for this project, we really see that there are exciting possibilities for artists and audiences to experience both of those environments, but simultaneously. So you'll hear us talk throughout this that you know, we're not just interested in, oh, let's put a, a gallery online, goodbye. And then that's the end of your experience. So we wanna try to get beyond that and move into something that's much more dynamic. Um, and even, even though restrictions have eased, this is one of the things that we've seen now, um, there's still hesitation in parts of the community to engage in person. Well, at the same time, we have all become very tired of being online in many ways. And so there's online fatigue. So we're, we're grasping, grasping with that as well. So we think that this project can help invigorate both of those experiences. And feel free to put any comments in the chat as, as you think of questions or have comments, you're welcome to put them in the chat. We can talk about them later. So what is the background, the vision and the purpose? So really it's about these three groups coming together. And this is an opportunity for you know, 11 multidiscipline artists supported by three curators. And we have five people in our project team. Plus there's going to be more people coming in and out of the project as well. And it's really wanting to bring together all of those disciplines. So dancers, visual artists, other disciplines to create new works and disseminate them online and in physical spaces simultaneously. We're not defining what that is or what that's going to look like. That is something that will um, evolve through the project work that we do together. So what are some of the benefits and the desired outcomes of the projects? Well, first of all, we want to see artists and curators from diverse disciplines collaborate iter iteratively through a series of activities to create and share new works online and in the physical spaces together. Um, we want to provide economic supports for participants to grow their practice and share their work and research. So this, is, this goes beyond um, artist fees for exhibition. It includes artist fees for exhibition, but it's also providing economic supports for creation and development. Thirdly, it's about building artistic digital capacity through this collaboration, experimentation, and learning. So learning and experimentation are a big thing here. We're not asking artists to come forward with pre-baked ideas. We're not asking artists to create, um, you know, their only, only works that um, are with, the, with their own practice. We're asking artists to come together and work in collaboration with others. This isn't, it's, it's not necessarily gonna be easy all the time, but um, you'll, we'll get better at it and, uh, and hopefully a lot of fun at the same time. So fourthly is about building organizational collaboration and digital capability and capacity. And that's for, that's for us, the three collaborating organizations. So we're actually gonna get stronger as a result as well. Sorry, I'm going backwards, here we go. And engaging the communities with inclusive and accessible live online events. So again, getting back to that point of like, how come we're getting so tired from online? I, I think personally, I think part of it is that we're seeing the same things and uh, people do wanna get engaged in something unique. 
So unique audience experiences simultaneously and iteratively in digital and physical spaces. So hopefully this is starting to give, build a picture in your minds about what this is gonna possibly be able to do. So who are the teams? So I've talked a little bit about this already. So Victoria Arts Council, Exchanges and Flux. And I just, I'm not gonna tell you all the background about the organizations. You can go and research them on your own, but I will tell you this, we have been collaborating ever since we created the first um, application for this project. Flux and Victoria Arts Council have been great supports uh, for exchanges, which is still a fully uh, volunteer run organization. We do not have professional staff. So we've been leaning on our partners here, VAC and Flux Media Gallery a lot for additional support and, you know, just working together as peers and, and as mentors too. Um, an interesting thing about the three organizations is that in Victoria anyway, Exchanges was founded in 1967 and is probably the oldest artist run center in Canada. Uh, Victoria Arts Council was established shortly after in 1968, an open space here in Victoria, same thing, similar groups of people who were starting these organizations back in the day. And Flux Media Gallery has just celebrated the 40th anniversary, I believe, is that right, Kat? Oh, she's on mute. Yeah, I'm on mute. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's right. Um, this past uh, December was our 40th. Your 40th. So, you know, we're coming we're coming together with a lot of years under our collective belts, but that doesn't mean we have old ideas. We're interested in in new ideas for sure and moving forward. Also, you know, each organization runs um, gallery public galleries. In fact, the Tory Arts Council has the most. They've got um, galleries all over the city. And in many different nooks and crannies, you'll find Victoria Arts Council artists uh, popping up all over. Plus they've got the online uh, publication Until Magazine, which is part of this project. And so the curators, where I keep talking about the curators, who I'm gonna introduce on the next slide, but what are they doing? What is, why do we have curators, curators involved in this project? Um, we really visualize that the curators were going to help support this whole team in the sense of engaging the artists, particularly those hard to reach artists and artists in marginalized communities. The curators also review and select artists from the open calls. So they're the ones who are gonna be reviewing the submissions. The artists also so help to select the works and design and plan for those collaborative um, integrated installations that are gonna take place in physical and online spaces together. So they're very much involved in that and providing context for the groups as we come together to learn and work together. They will invite relevant artists and technology experts as well to help provide talks and demonstrations. So, you know, this is about digital work as much as physical work. So in the digital space, what are we talking about? Virtual reality augmented reality, projections, video, all kinds of media. Um, so we want to really learn a lot about that in this space. We don't expect people to come already uh, having that background, but if you have that background already, great. Uh, you're totally in the right space. Um, and if you don't have you know, some of the physical media, if you're not a painter, that's okay. Whatever it is, you can still apply. Um, the curators also help to provide artistic direction for the project and the approach and that context setting um, for, you know, what we're doing in each phase and coaching and mentoring and facilitating. Curators are great at that and that's what we're looking um, to them to help with the artists and with the project team overall. So who are our curators? And to Two of them are here today who you've met, Teresa Vandermeer Schuss and Kemi Craig. And I'm sorry that Constance Cook cannot be here, but I did want to at least show um, a picture of the curators. You can find this information on our website. So I won't be reviewing their full and wonderful bios at this time, but you can certainly look them up on our website. We're very excited to have this particular team working together. Uh, they all come from very uh, different and diverse backgrounds, and they all have very diverse skills to bring to the arts and to the artists who are participating in this project. So it's going to be really exciting. And the organization. So how does this work? You're sitting there. Well, where are the artists in this? Okay. So the artists, and this is not a hierarchy, but it's more of how we work together. 
Um, the community partners team were really in, involved in the project management, managing all the boring stuff like finance and logistics and that type of thing. I'm just kidding, it's not boring. Of course, it's exciting. We're also um, really working in our own spaces and our own galleries, you know, behind the scenes, making sure that there is gonna be opportunities for artists to disseminate their work and, and all of that good stuff. Working with the curator and mentor team. And of course, yay, thanks IMAA for funding an intern for our project. So we're really excited. Um, we're actually doing interviews on August 2nd for uh, the candidates who've submitted applications to be our intern. Um, so the intern is gonna be a very integral part of the, of the project support as well. And you can see from these arrows that are going all over the place that there's a lot of communication and um, direction happening. The community partners, of course, are responsible to their various boards of directors. Each one of us is a nonprofit charity. So we you know, have to report to the board about what's happening with the project. So we'll be doing that. And you'll see here this big double-ended um, dotted line between the artists and the community partners team. That's so that artists know that at any time, they can come and talk to any one of us about things that are going on in the project. And so a little bit about the project management. So here are the phases on the left. This is kind of a high level timeline view of what our project looks like today. Right now, you can see here with this red line and the arrow, this is where we are today. We're in phase zero, which is getting ready for all of you folks to make your applications and um, looking at the collaboration spaces and just doing all that nitty gritty background stuff that we have to do. In the first phase, the kickoff, you know, is going to happen in September. And it's really about research and learning. Again, in every single phase, you see research and learning happens in every single phase. And that's where we bring people in to talk about their work, um, sharing their, um, you know, skills and knowledge about certain technologies or different ways of doing things. So you're gonna be hearing from a lot of different artists and, and uh, technology people in the field. And then also each phase ends with a dissemination on um, online and physical space, TBD. We're not sure, again, we're not defining what that looks like. The artists are going to be defining what that looks like along with the curators. Uh, we don't wanna predict or pre-bake any ideas here. We need to let those creative ideas come out and also be influenced by the researching and research and learning that takes place in every phase. So phase one going from September to December, then the next one, January to April, May to August into 2023, and then wrapping up with a full um, phase online with Until Magazine and uh, physical dissemination at the AC Gallery. So it's a lot to take in, I know, but um, those people who get into the project, you'll, you'll get to know it uh, very deeply. So your artist submission, so this is where it starts. How do I get involved with the project? So the deadline is August 12th. We have the form and you should all have the form at this point online. And so we want to talk a little bit about what makes a great submission because that's why you're here today. You want to know what makes a great submission. We tried to make this as accessible as possible. And I think that it's important we emphasize this with, with um, the folks who are here today that um, you know, we've made every opportunity that we can possible for you to submit um, major parts of your application by video if you like. Um, and also providing links directly to the works that you want us to review. And also uh, submitting your, your other sort of video materials or different things like that, as well as a CV. And we've asked very uh, clear questions. We hope the questions are clear enough, but you're going to let us know today if you've got questions about it. To tell us, why do you want to be in this project? And what, what's it going to do for you in terms of your artistic practice? And how, how do you see yourself collaborating uh, within this community? So those are some of the things. And I, I'm going to ask um, Kemi and Teresa as well, if you want to add anything else about artists making their submissions and any advice that you might have for them. Um, yeah, so when I'm, you know, when I'm sitting on one of these and I'm reviewing all the artist applications, um, plain language, don't get complicated, make it very simple. 
like those kind of things. I don't want people to stress too much about it. I know it's kind of a stressful experience to begin with, uh, but just remember that there's humans on the other side <laughs> that will be reading your applications and provide us with things that, what, what's of interest to you? Because I'm interested to learn more about you, what you're focused on, where you want your art to go, um, those kind of things. Just keep it simple. Don't, don't make it too complicated or anything like that. Just think about what's passionate in your life, and we're going we're gonna to pick up on that. Thank you, Teresa. And maybe just to um, uh, add to what Teresa was saying, um, in terms of like being yourself and speaking to what you're passionate about. Um, one of the exciting parts of this project is that we're coming together and what will emerge will be unique to the artists and, and the group. Like, it's almost like what's between us is is what's so special about the project. And so we really want to know who you are, what your interests are, um, rather than maybe what you think we might want to hear or be interested in. And that can often happen um, in, in grant writing, but like just to reiterate, being yourself and like really being um, really kind of like having that specificity in terms of like what your interests are because I think that's what will build a really powerful uh, team and experience. I'm just going to add one thing. Um, I don't want people who are applying to be intimidated by the idea of the technology too. I know at uh, Flux Gallery we have people coming in off the street, their artistic practice might be completely different and unrelated to anything technological, um, but then come up with really interesting and unique ideas because you're not, um, it's a new thing for you. So you might see it in a way that somebody who's been practicing, you know, filmmaking or whatever um, has never come up with before. Uh, so we're here to support. Um, we can help you uh, gain those skills and gain that confidence because uh, we'll all be working together in a collaborative environment. So. Great, thank you. Um, that is our presentation. I am going to share the um, email as well. If you have our email, uh, pidc.collaboration.project at gmail. I'll put it in the chat as well. People can email in questions. We have already had some questions come into our email, but I wanna open up the floor to you folks. You can either put in the chat or unmute yourself with um, your questions. What questions do you have today? And maybe use the hand, you know how to use the hand on the, on the reactions button at the bottom. Just raise your hand if you would like to ask a question. And I don't know if I can see everybody here. Um, there is a question in the chat uh, regarding the time commitment for this project. And yeah. it says a uh, ballpark. I don't know if you can access the slide again that has the breakdown. Yes, I can. Thank you. Great question. Let's go back to that. Okay. So the time commitment from, from beginning to end is September. 2022. The wrap up for the project will be December 2023. So it's actually longer than one year. In phase four, you see that we don't have the research and learning and development and the dissemination uh, the same in phase four. That's because the fourth of dissemination is all online with Until Magazine. So here, you won't be doing any um, new work here in phase four, it's really about dissemination um, and, and potentially presentation through one of the BAC galleries. But so the main body of work takes place here in these three phases all the way through here. And um, what would be the, uh, another question might be, um, you know, how much time per month or per phase, per week, that type of thing. We haven't determined that quite yet. So that we don't have all of the answers for some of the project planning. Somebody else has a question? 
Somebody's asking if um, this uh, will be available to replay, if there'll be a, a link. Yes, we'll send a link out and we'll post it on the, on the uh, exchanges website as well. And somebody, Brittany's asking, are we working on multiple projects or one big project as a collective group? No, you will be broken out into groups. And you'll have a chance to, there's 11 artists participating and we anticipate that everyone will get a chance to work with, with somebody else in the project. You'll get to work with everybody by the time we're done. And it will be defined by the artists, what the work looks like, the collaborative work and what opportunities there are for you to also share your individual work. So if you can imagine, uh, we're trying to keep all possibilities open here for collaborating in teams, small teams, duos, trios, and also some of your own expression. Awesome, thank you, Emily. Okay, Amber, hi, Amber. Do you envision that we will give all our time for this or will we be able to continue on our own individual practice? For sure, we're not gonna tell you you can't do your own work. You can absolutely pursue your own work um, outside, of, outside of this and also for the project, you can pursue your own work. This is where the curator mentors come in really handy and helpful um, to help you sort of work through um, the work that you'll be doing. And, and it is a complex project. Complex ones are the most fun. So absolutely, um, we're gonna be leaning on the curator mentors to, to help with facilitating those conversations. Okay, Sarah's asking, do the curators take care of the technology piece or is it all collaborative? Um, if you would like to visualize, the technology is, is integrated. So don't think of technology as being separate only or physical uh, works being separate only. This is where it gets really fun. And it's not, it doesn't all have to be collaborative. We do, you're gonna collaborate for sure, but even back to Amber's question about individual practice. So there is space for individual practice. We don't expect you to give up your individual work. Let me ask the question of the group. Has anybody here worked on a big collaboration project before or a collaboration of any kind? Sarah's lifting her hand. Sure. Sarah, do you want to tell us a bit, a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I used to be a graphic designer and I would be part of teams to brainstorm creative ideas. So I, I have experience in those settings as well as organizing um, art shows and stuff. Great. Somebody had their hand up and I just lost the video. Where did it go? Maybe you changed, maybe you changed there, your mind. There's a question about how writers fit in if if it's only visual artists or are literary artists also? Yes, literary artists are also um, invited to apply. We do have that on the application form. So if you want to, um, has everybody had a chance to see the application form? Yeah, because I can also walk through the application form a little bit. There is a space there, you know, to tell us about your practice. And if you're, um, uh, you know, literary artist, or poetry, slam, spoken word. We the only the only thing we did not contemplate was novelists. I actually we didn't come to think of it. We did not put playwrights on the list of literary artists, but give us a pitch for sure. Jenny or I'm sorry, D is next. I think. Okay, I'm um, sorry I came in late, so I wasn't sure if you covered this or not, but I did look at the application form and I've noticed that um, the dates are really off is or which dates are we taking, because it says like the on the forms, it says the 20th is the actual cutoff date, whereas the email and all the other information says it's the 12th. I think it's the 12th. What does it say there? You're it's right. Oh, good catch, D. And we reviewed hey. this 10 times. 
<laughs> okay, I just fixed it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Jenny. Yeah, back to the collaboration uh, question. I've, as a filmmaker, photographer, I've worked with um, spoken word artists making films nice. um, for their poetry that also includes other artists like dancers and embodiment and um, and then working with a friend who does um, sound as well so um, great so you've yeah got a and then lot working with covered. some yeah. yeah and some of those have actually been broadcasted on yeah like COVID era like live um, arts and social change focus broadcast or storytelling um, broadcasts. One included the poet doing a live performance for the broadcast with the film being shown behind her and then was like broadcasted online. So interesting. That was very pretty cool. cool. That is very cool. Great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, Chandler. Hi, I just had a question. I have also done a lot of collaborative work, but I kind of caught the words that you said that were like, oh, just pitch to us. Mm -hmm. um, and I was curious um, if the application, if we're, if we're supposed to have a particular idea about what we'd be no. doing in these collaborations. No, no, nope, okay. no, no, no. We cool. don't want to define it. We are not prescriptive. Okay. We are not Great. doing any of that. Uh, yeah, we absolutely want to stay away from doing any of that, Chandler, because okay. when the, when the we don't know who's coming together, we don't know how their how their brains and their experience is going to mix up. It's yeah, and that's the exciting part, right? Not yeah, people. definitely. Yeah, yeah, I've done actually quite a lot of collaboration, and that's the part that I love is being able yeah. to let go of your own ideas and work yeah. with other people and have that stimulate you. So I, yeah. I guess I have just caught those words and been like, ooh, what does that mean? So okay, thanks for clarifying. Yeah. There's a there's a section on the application where you can tell us, you know, where you see you know, why, why you think you're a good fit for this, how this is going to influence your practice, you know, yeah, why you're applying basically, right? So okay. and if you want to put some words in there around that, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Good. Thanks. Brittany. Hi, I haven't had a chance to look at the application yet. Um, but I was wondering, are we allowed to come to you guys with like an idea for a project already? And maybe like a kind of like what it looks like, like I a can't. person. You can, you can. I there's no reason why you couldn't. It could be part of your example of why you would like to be involved in this project, right? And and Kemi and Teresa, tell me if I'm going off script here with that idea. But um, I my only thing that I would say to you on that is, um, it it may not happen, but it may be great for us to hear about it right? That that's something that you would like to do. And absolutely, I wouldn't want to discourage you from sharing your idea. I just wouldn't want to say that it was, it, it would happen for sure. Okay. Is that yeah. fair enough? Yeah. I, sure. I agree with that too, of just, um, if you are pretty strict on like this idea to happen, it might restrict what your experience would be in the project because it is so collaborative. Um, and when you're working with other artists, projects are going to change. You're going to have to negotiate with one another. You're going to have to compromise. So if you're not willing to do that for your project, then it might not be the best. But if you want to show it to us and be like, this is something I might be thinking about, or this is a theme that I would like to bring to the collaborative project. Those are all really good ideas to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. You're excited about that already. And particularly, I think if you um, maybe uh, apply the lens of it being um, rather that rather than you wanting to do a specific idea more as an illustration of what your interests are and what you're passionate about, then that helps us get to know you. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Tara. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Um, will there be access to equipment for audio and video making things? Yeah, that's uh, one of the ways that we come in. 
is providing that uh, support. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. There's a second screen of video here. Has anybody else got their hands up? So uh, Teresa touched on an interesting point too, which is, you know, through collaboration, uh, which is what is kind of canvassing people to see what their levels of experience are with collaboration. Cause it's almost like, you know, when you go to work and you have to collaborate with people at work and there is negotiation that takes place and sometimes compromises have to be made. Um, so consider that too, when you're making your application, because it is one of the questions we ask, you know, how do you see yourself collaborating with others? And many artists have a very solitary practice and haven't had a chance to collaborate with others. So we completely encourage those folks to apply as well. This is going to be, again, a learning experience for everyone. Um, that's why we made learning really front and center it's not just learning about technologies, but it's learning about how we operate together and how we work together and support each other through these processes. And, um, you know, it's really about building community as well. Uh, through this whole thing, you're going to make a lot of new friends and you're going to grow your network and you're going to have a much bigger community by the end of it. And our community is going to be much bigger for it. So consider some of those things too when you're... Um, when you're making your application. And Kathleen Johnson raised hand. Kathleen. Hi. Can't hear you. You have to unmute. Sorry about that. There you um, go. Why are we still doing this two years later? We're not unmuting. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I wanted to know as well, like when you say collaborative, um, I'm kind of getting scared because I haven't done a lot of intimate collaborative work. My collaboration um, is through film. Um, as a makeup artist and uh, screenplay writing and whatnot. So I've, I've only kind of been involved uh, in like union stuff or like bigger projects. So um, when you're talking about collaboration and group work, like, mm -hmm. is there a specific, a more specific skill set that you're looking for? Or is it just being able to collaborate in general? I you know what, I'm going to tug on our curators here too, and Kat, to answer some more of this talk. We've talked through this and I've talked a lot today, so I'm going to hand it over to you folks. Yeah, I could jump in on that one sure. um, first. Um, I was just recently working with a group that um, had collaborated for the very first time. Uh, they only had actually like a two months, I think, together. Um, and none of them had collaborated before. So it is, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of um, trust. Trust has to be built uh, between the artists, between the curators. But that's why we're here. The curators will be helping with a lot of that facilitating of the co um, collaborations. Um, we're the ones that you can, you know, share ideas with, you, you know, we're the ones that you can talk to if you're having some difficulty with collaboration. Um, it is a part of the project and we'll definitely encourage it as much as we can. But I, I don't want you to feel discouraged or concerned about it. It's it's more of relationship building, right? Like this, these are people that you might be spending parts of, um, you know, almost, uh, I think over a year <laughs> with kind of communicating and you can see a timeline of people's um, artistic practice, right? Which I think is really exciting. Like just being able to kind of actually work with someone for a longer period of time, you might actually be able to pick up um, some new skills that you've never seen before. You might be sharing some things that people are interested in and that they have no idea about. Like there's something there that um, I think is uh, important for every artist to experience at least once in their lifetime is a collaborative project like this, but we're, we're it's going to be loose. You know, the curators were here to support you. That's why we're here. But I'll, I'll pass it on to Kimmy if she wants to add anything more. But I don't want you to feel discouraged about it. Think of it as a, as a an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, and I would say, like, when you speak about um, whether we're looking for a particular skill set, if anything, that's the part where you get to shine, where you talk about what your 
particular skill set is because we don't we're not saying that um, the skill set can only exist in one area or another. And so that's where it's great if you are um, kind of detailed about what your skill set is and what your interests are as well. And that's where I really um, kind of look at the the intersections with this project because it's not so much that you need to have a particular skill set but rather okay you have this skill set and there may be other artists that have completely different skill sets and what what is created when the two or the three of you or how like get together what is and something completely new should be able to emerge from these various skill sets I don't know if that makes any. No, that's great. Clear. Thank you. Great. Thanks. I think too, um, you know, from the research aspect, because we are very interested in research and learning and that kind of thing. And I know myself personally, collaboration has been something that I've been involved with through my whole career. And as a curator, as, a, as an artist, working in the community, doing community-based work, and so I know myself personally, I'm very, very keen to um, gather the learnings from this team and this group of people working together on collaboration and what it means and how it works and um, just collecting whatever learnings we can as a, as a whole group on collaboration. This is a big topic out there for sure. So thanks for your question, Kathleen. Uh, Jenny, you've had your hand up. Yeah, thanks. So I think Kimmy answered it, but maybe just to like flush that out a little bit more um, as an example. Um, so I do a lot of client work in my photography, my fine art photography business. So I've worked a lot, like with a lot of one-on-one -on -one with other people. Um, so for example, I was like, oh, well that I guess is fits within the collaborative um, energetics, I guess. So I could kind of flesh out some of the skills that I've cultivated over my years of doing client work. Definitely. Yep. Okay. Um, I had another question for people and you can put this in the chat or you can offer up in um, sort of hearing about this project, what was, the, what was the key thing that got your attention and why you would like to apply for this? I'm just, I'm curious to ask, ask folks, what were the things that really got them, got them excited about that? Heidi, before we go to that question, I'm um, oh, sure. wondering, Sarah has another question here. Oh. Um, the idea that we would be paired with one or two artists uh, to collaborate or are all 11 artists collaborating together? Yeah, we've anticipated that we would have groups, collaborative groups. In some sense, though, in the disseminations, it's everybody together, disseminating together, but different works. Can we and apply I to do? Think, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Kemi. I was just going to say, I think one of the things that you were saying before was that, um, like, through the different phases, um, at each phase, you might be working with uh, one group of artists here, and then this, the next phase, a different yeah. uh, partnership or a group of artists, and then the next one different. And so the idea would be that eventually you would have an opportunity to work with everyone, but not necessarily everyone at the same time in terms of creating like one big yeah. work together. And there's just another question here. Um, can we apply as a duo if it is allowed? Should each of us make individual applications? Uh, I think we did say it's open to collectives. So as a collective, you can apply. And then following up, how are groups formed? TBD. This is the curators going to figure this out once they once they uh, um, you know, see the applications and come up with the short list of the participating artists, then they'll determine what the first group will be, first groupings will be. Hi, 
Heidi, can you see the chat? There's some people who've responded to your question of, of why they're ah, here. We go. I'm excited that it's a collaborative project and would be supported by curators, other participants, and audio and video or other envisioned spaces would be supported. Very good. Thanks, Tara Lee. And Emily, excited by the idea of collaboration between digital and physical embodied approaches. Thank you. And Sarah, excited to be working with artists from Vancouver Island and surrounding islands. It was really exciting. Yay. And Leah, because I'm interested because of the intersection of art and technology. Mm -hmm. Having been working in the tech sector for almost, most of my adult career and having carried a lot of those, oops, interesting to art, both artists and technologists are problem solvers and the two kinds of people together are loads of fun and innovation, yes. Kathleen, what attracted me, oops, I'm losing. Oh, okay, everybody's putting their ideas in now. I'm losing the chat getting to operate in a creative space and form relationships with other artists. Yeah, new to Victoria. Okay, thanks, Kathleen. Amber, if I'm honest, I didn't really understand the call out. I was curious to learn more about the project. The reference to technology made me think it wasn't for me. So I'm really glad I came to the info session. It sounds really exciting. Thanks, Amber. And Diana, collaboration and creation, time to experiment. And Paulina, Paulino, sorry. I uh, really love the sort of hybridization of embodied physical and digital practice as someone who's like kind of rabid with different tech and bounces between a billion different little tools. And then also as someone who needs to really pay attention to my body, this is an ideal combination. Yes, no kidding. Victoria, collaboration is the bomb. True enough, right? So very happy to hear how you're going about creating this in such an open way. Thank you very much. And Andrew, meet new folks. Yeah, work with different disciplines, create and learn more about the intersections of live and digital performance. Very good, thank you. Chandler, I found, oh, I'm okay. I won't be able to read them all. Everybody's gonna have to read. Nice. Well, so that's good. It sounds like we hit some, hit some of the right buttons. It's good. Uh, we just have nine minutes left for any last questions. I, I will um, actually say maybe use your reaction button at the bottom if you think you will apply to this project. Use the thumbs up or the heart if you think you're going to apply or the, or the uh, fireworks there, heart, heart. Hearts, hearts and thumbs, great. Very good, thank you. Please share this information with your friends and colleagues. And again, remember you can email us. I will put the email, project at gmail.com. So you can email us and let us know if there's more questions. We'll post, a, we'll eventually put a, have to put an FAQ or something up on the exchanges website. We don't have a website yet for the PIDC project, but we will soon once our intern is hired. And then we we'll wanna go live with some of our materials and such, but uh, yes, all part of the development and growth of the project. Okay, well, thank you all so much for coming out today and um, asking these great questions and giving us a chance to meet you. It's been wonderful. Really appreciate it a lot. And um, yes, we'll look forward to seeing all of those great applications coming in on the 12th, not the 20th. I fixed the form. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> okay, thumbs up. Thank you. And if our PIDC people can hang on for a minute when everybody's gone.